Good day, and I'm really privileged and honored to be addressing this GitHub Constellation India event. The open source movement has become more and more relevant around the world and in India. And I'm truly delighted to be addressing all of you. Before I get into the open source aspect of it, I thought I would just tell you why India is now in its tech decade and therefore why the work that you do has become even more critical and important. There are three trends in the technology world in India, which are all coming together and creating an extraordinary opportunity. The first is the global growth of technology and digital services from India. The pandemic led to digital acceleration worldwide and every major company is reinventing its technological infrastructure to be more digital, to use more AI, more open source, more cloud, more analytics, consumerization of the user experience and so on. This has led to a huge opportunity for India because India has become the place with the largest number of talent and developers. Just to give you an idea of the scale of acceleration, it took 30 years for the Indian software industry servicing the global market to reach $100 billion in revenue. The second $100 billion came in 10 years. And now the industry does about $227 billion in revenue. The third $100 billion is going to come in three to four years. So the first $100 million was 30 years. The second $100 billion was 10 years. And the third $100 billion is coming in three to four years. That shows you the acceleration of what is happening globally. In India, we currently have about 4.5 million developers in across the IT industry and startups and so on. This is expected to double to about 9 to 10 million developers in the next decade. So what took 40 years to reach 4.5 million developers will now double in just 10 years. So you see that there's the acceleration of talent in this industry. And nowhere else in the world, there is such a wide pool of developers and engineering talent. So this is trend number one. Trend number two is, of course, the dramatic growth in the startup industry. We have seen that the last year was the coming of age of the startup industry. We saw many, many unicorns, I think over 40 unicorns. In fact, half the unicorns totally in India came up just in the last one year. And even this year, we're seeing the growth of many unicorns. We also saw that the wall between the private market and the public market came down with many of the companies that began as new wave digital companies went public, whether it's Nika or Paytm or uh, Zomato, and we expect to see more in the coming years. And India is facing a huge opportunity because on the one hand, global capital is coming here, even though there is some amount of uh, capital uh, slowdown because of the fact that the interest rates are going up in the US and so on, it will continue to be in India because uh, a lot of the capital that was earlier going to China is coming to India. So that's number one. We are seeing a lot of opportunity in India, both in the domestic products market, as well as in the global SaaS market. So we see a lot of companies. And then of course, emerging new areas like crypto and metaverse and so on. And India has a tremendous pool of very exciting young founders who have the ambition, the energy, and the goal of creating global companies. So the startup world is really growing very fast and they will provide a significant role in India. And of course, many of them will use open source products and so on. The third thing is something which happened in India over the last 30 years. 
uh, I'm sorry, last decade, which is the growth of what we call as India's digital public goods. And this is essentially population scale digital platforms that are available for everyone to use. They are very high volume, very low cost, very small transaction value, and all in real time. The first of these was Aadhaar, which I essentially led the organization called UIDAI. From 2009 to 14, I was employee number one of this government startup. And that led to 1.3 billion people being issued a digital ID called Aadhaar, which has become ubiquitous for authentication and KYC across the country. This is a platform that does 15 million authentications a day, 5 million eKYCs a day. So whether you want to open a bank account or buy a mobile connection or buy a mutual fund, you can use Aadhaar eKYC. So that is one thing which has happened, which is part of the digital public goods. This also was combined with the banking sector to create uh, the uh, uh, direct benefit transfer program. So every bank account is linked to an Aadhaar number and there are over 700 million unique Aadhaar linked bank accounts. And this is used for direct transfer of money by the government to literally hundreds of millions of uh, beneficiaries in the country. It all happens in real time, zero corruption, and it reaches the bank account instantly with this modern infrastructure which we have created. And this infrastructure was very useful during the pandemic because the government wanted to send you know, billions of dollars uh, into individual bank accounts, each bank account getting a few hundred rupees. And they were able to do that using the DBT and India runs the world's largest DBT program. And at the other end, there is something called the Aadhaar Enabled Payment System, which allows you to withdraw money using a phone and a biometric authentication in any village. And that system alone does maybe 100 million transactions every month. So all these things have made a dramatic impact on the people and the benefit they get. Then we had the development of UPI. UPI was built by the National Payment Corporation of India, a nonprofit company set up by all the banks under the sponsorship of the RBI. I am an advisor on technology and innovation to uh, public policy to NPCI. And, NP and I worked with them on the creation and launch of UPI, a payment system that was designed in 2013 to 2015 and it launched in May of 2016. In October of 2016, UPI did 100,000 transactions. In November 2016, you had the withdrawal of currency notes, what's popularly called as demonetization. And then digital payments took off. Last month alone, UPI did 5 billion payments. And the transaction value of UPI in the financial year ending March 31st, 2022 was over $1 trillion. So this is the most successful payment system in the world. It's very high volume, as I said, it's low cost. In fact, it is zero cost to the consumer. You can do small transactions. And today when I, I live in Koromangla, Bangalore, and when I go out for a walk, I see vegetable vendors and coconut sellers accepting UPI payments. So clearly this has become something that has democratized payments. Then there's a new account aggregator system which is coming, which allows individuals and businesses to leverage their own data to get benefits. So a small business can use its GST data to get a loan. A consumer can use his salary data to get a loan and so on. And account aggregator is a big thing which is happening. Another part of our digital public goods was the fast tag system. I led a committee in 2010 to design the fast tag system for road uh, toll collection. That does 100 crores a day of collection, about 40,000 crores a year of collection on fast tag. And fast tag was designed as a platform which can be used for other applications. So increasingly now you're seeing startups doing parking, congestion charges, 
paying fuel bills, all using FASTAG. So there are many, many such examples of the fact that India is building this range of digital public goods. Now, all these three trends are coming together. The fact that the global technology work is being developed in India and it will reach 10 million people in 10 years. The fact that we have a thriving ecosystem of startups, founders, venture capital, companies going public, which will create lots of innovation in India. And that we have built a vast array of digital public goods. And many more digital public goods are coming like the ONDC, the Open Network for Digital Commerce and so on. What is important to note is the important and huge role that the open source movement is playing in all these areas. Today, GitHub has become the de facto place for all open source. And I'm told that India is or the third largest base of developers in the world. And I'm sure that in the coming years, it will become the first or the second largest base of developers. So clearly, one thing is that India will have the largest pool of open source developers. That's in terms of quantity. But it's also about quality. It's about what kind of contributions you make and how important a role you play in the global open source movement. I do believe there are a large number of committers to major international open source platforms from India, and I believe that will only continue. So both in quantity and quality, we expect to see a large, large contribution from the Indian open source community. But it's also important that India become a source of open source platforms themselves. So we have to bring all this together to actually create open source platforms which can be used by everyone else. And in this area, in fact, in the digital public goods that I talked about, open source has played a very important role. When we designed the Aadha stack, Aadha platform in 2009, this was 13 years back, we took a very conscious decision that we would build this using a completely open source stack, using you know, Hadoop and uh, MySQL and you know, all kinds of things, which I mean, we kept changing the, the stack, but they're all using open source uh, elements, MQ series and so on. And at that time, it was a radical thing. Nobody in India had done such a large project using open source. We did it. And that is one of the reasons that we have a platform that can issue 1.3 billion Aadhaars, do 50 million authentications a day at a very low cost because the entire stack is using open source. And in fact, subsequently, there has been an initiative called MOSIP, which is a modular open source in identity platform, which is being developed as a public good developed at IIIT Bangalore, and many countries are using this open source platform. So MOSIP is the first example. I mean, one of the first examples of a complete open source platform stack built in India being used elsewhere in the world. The second thing is the entire UPI platform built by NPCI is again built using an open source stack. The entire thing is open source. And it is now being designed to do 1 billion transactions a day. So you can see how open source products have been used in UPI. That has made UPI very, very cheap and very, very easy, very low cost hardware. And that's one of the reasons why NPC is able to offer it at such a low or no cost. And in fact, NPCI has become one of the foremost users of open source and using the underlying open source transaction infrastructure UPI, many of the other products from NPCI like AEPS and IMPS have all been reconfigured to sit on top of the open source stack. And that's been a very big moment within NPCI and therefore UPI and Aadhaar both two of the biggest platforms ever built in the world are all completely built using open source. 
A third example is something which a foundation that I support called XTEP Foundation has built, which is a complete set of open source modules for education, learning, and skilling called Sunbird. It's all on GitHub. It's all out there. It's all under a very good, I think, MIT license. And many people are using modules from that. The Indian government has built an education platform called Diksha, which was very useful in the pandemic because it could reach millions of teachers and students. The entire Diksha platform, the underlying infrastructure is all open source Sunbird in, from India. And that again is being looked at by countries around the world as something that they can take to reimagine their learning and education. A fourth example is what happened in the pandemic. During the pandemic, we had to India had to launch a program to get multiple, uh, uh, you know, get millions of people, billion people to get vaccinated. One part, of course, was to make sure that we had the vaccines manufactured here, like what was done by Serum Institute and Bharat Biotech. But equally important was the digital infrastructure for that. And hence the government launched the COVID platform. It was, it was essentially run and managed by my old colleague and friend, Ram Sevak Sharma, who is the CEO of NHA. And because of that platform, a billion people could get the vaccinations and everything could be tracked and they could get the appointments and go anywhere and get the vaccination. And that was a huge success. Along with COVID, there was also the vaccination certificate, which is another open source platform called DWOC. And DWOC is an open source platform that can generate a digital certificate, which is encrypted, digitally signed, QR coded, verifiable online or offline, usable in printed form on your smartphone or in your digital locker. And in India, 1.8 billion vaccination certificates have been generated all using an open source tool. And that open source tool is now being used in other countries like Philippines, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and so on. So we are seeing many, many examples of this open source in India being used uh, across the world. And finally, let me talk about the AI-based open source stack being developed for the National Language Translation Mission. This is going to be a complete open set of AI mod mod models open data and uh, you know an architecture which allows all of Indian languages to be able to translate into each other, speech to speech, speech to text, text to speech, text to text, everything is being covered. And this is again being designed under the National Language Translation Mission of Métis to be a completely open source platform. So let me end by saying that India is at a very critical and transformative point because of all these various developments. Open source movement is very, very important for India and the world. And the GitHub platform has become the de facto standard for open source. I do believe all of you can play a huge role in building a bigger community of open source developers, in playing a larger role in global open source products, and launching India's own open source products that can be taken globally and therefore make a huge difference to the transformation of India and the world. Thank you and have a great event.